So there we have it. What happened with uh, John Howard and Costello was that they took the $21 billion deficit that the Labor Party left them uh, when the Labor Party opened the door to multinational corporations in the platform of so-called free trade. I mean, I'm not even going to go down that conversation. So-called free trade, it's just an absolute joke globally. No such thing as so-called free trade. There isn't any free trade. Uh, it's all manipulated and it's not a level playing field. Never has been, never will be. Uh, but I'm not going to go any further with that subject. It's a whole series of DVDs all on their own. And better uh, qualified people than me on my website, healysnomorebs.com, are more qualified to speak about that, especially Jim Rickards. Remember that name. Uh, I would say Jim, along with Mike Maloney, uh, in my opinion, are the two world's best authorities. And, of course, Professor Steve King, Peter Sheff, um, the other two end. I really do like um, Max Kaiser. Um, he is absolutely brilliant as well. Now, getting back to the uh, Howard and Costello. So what they did with the $21 billion deficit, they decided to shift it off the books and turn it into a new home liars, uh, liars is correct, new home loan bribe, a new home loan buyer's bribe, we call it, and so does Professor Steve Keen. The fact is that that deficit got shifted into private debt. And when you look at the government figures, they don't mention private debt. They don't mention uh, uh, business private debt. They don't mention your mortgage debt. It's not on the books. It's under the table. So when they quote all these figures, it's, it, government figures, it's got nothing to do with private debt. However, it's a total aggregate picture. As Professor Steve Keane will tell you, the reason why we're in trouble isn't that anyone, nor Howard, nor Costello, they didn't solve anything. They just shifted the debt off the books so it looked good. And then they put my generation, give them a bribe, an offer to go into mortgage debt. Mortgage debt. Think about it. Houses worth 800000 now, 30000 40 years ago. They've gone up by almost 30 times or 3000 percent more. Wages were five bucks around about the 2000, sorry, correction, around about 1976. Now they're about 18 bucks an hour, going up three to four times. So that's where your inflation's going into the asset house bubble. And if anyone that you know is on the average wage of 1500 a week or 80 grand, as Malcolm Turnbull says, is the average mean wage for Australians, uh, you know, it isn't a doctor, dentist, lawyer, or some other big executive businessman, um, you let me know because I don't know of too many people that are on those sort of wages or either aren't in the higher echelon of the business world. <clears throat> so the average Aussie out there, as I said before, is earning around about 700 a week, 500 to 700 a week. So 700 a week by 50 is about 35,000. And my son's an accountant. He's on 55 grand a year. Well, he's not a partner in the business, so he's just on what the standard wage is. So you figure that out. He's an accountant. So what about the workers? Yeah, it all doesn't add up, I know. Uh, unfortunately, when you go into the government sites, uh, try and find out the real figures, uh, they're all, uh, um, let us say, twisted would be the best word I could use. For instance, I'll give you an example, uh, unemployment rates, right, they say they're 6% or so, right, but that includes people who've got one or two hours of work. So the real figures, the real figures should include full-time work or underemployed. That's more like it. And those figures are up around about the 9 to 10%. In youth, it's about 25% in some towns in Australia. So you cannot uh, take notice of any of the statistics that they come out with because they don't give you what they're basing the statistics on. It's just figures. And they're very good at fudging them. They're very good at twisting them. They're very good at actually telling lies so it makes it look good and you don't know what the hell's going on. But, as we know now, because of the, what I call, off-the-media media, media, uh, such as Facebook and um, you know, other 
areas of media who aren't mainline so that we're not copying the full propaganda uh, from the political machines. We actually can decipher through the internet, through people who just cut the BS out and we go, oh, okay, that's what's really happening. Now, I won't go on on that area, we'll just continue on this. So, <clears throat> here we are today with uh, Johnny Howard, uh, looked as if he resolved the economic crisis that Labor left us from uh, Whitlam, uh, Keating and Hawke. But he didn't. He just shifted the debt into private debt. Very, very sneaky, really. Uh, I've got to congratulate him on that, little Johnny Howard. Um, you know, and he, he left a really good tick in the box. Everyone thought he was a great Prime Minister and uh, thought that Costello was a great treasurer. Well, you know, they, they had their good points, I must admit, uh, but uh, they didn't do anything really positive for the economy in reality because they did nothing. Why? Why do I say that? Well, because they did nothing for small business. And if they did anything for small business, it was so insignificant. It really didn't matter. And the reason why I say that, <clears throat> in any global economy, the majority or the global machine or the economic machine for any community, for any national economy and for any international economy uh, is the small business. I didn't say medium, small business. In Australia, small business is 27% of the business community. This is all the little fish shops and news agencies, milk runs, all these sort of well, milk runs weren't rationalised. <clears throat> and small little businesses, you know, supplement stores, little health centres, not franchise ones, you know, per privately owned ones. Um, and, and people, the average Aussie out there, um, running a small business and providing for their family and providing a service for the community. That's 97% of the businesses in Australia and they, un they employ under uh, 20 people. Now, where is it really at? Okay, that little door that was opened with multinational corporations by the Paul uh, Keating and Hawke and Whitlamira, about 25% open. Uh, what Howard and Costello did, they just threw it right open. They threw it right open. It might have been open a little bit with, with Keating and Co, they just opened the door right up. So now, We've got multinational corporations uh, that was flooded into this country to develop it, question mark. The reality of that development, initial stage is yes. It, they developed factories and what have you and employed people and that got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then what happened? They got government subsidies. They got the government paying them taxpayers' money to continue on developing and then just recently they exited stage left manufacturing industries out all these other industries gone mining industries shut down price of iron ore and all that that's got something to do with it but you know manufacturing especially offshore over to China Thailand Middle East all this sort of stuff okay so where did that leave Australia it left Australia in debt simple so <clears throat> My mother, I'll give you another little example. I'm sort of flicking to one thing to the other, but it's all relevant when you go on the website. My mother rang me. They've been in business all their life. Small business. My father was an upholsterer, uh, as well as a, a champion boxer and a sportsman. But he had an upholstery business. And when uh, our uh, most infamous, I find, the most infamous Prime Minister and the most this has been kind, the most incompetent treasure that this country's ever seen is, um, of course, Abbott, Mr. Abbott, and his little off side of hockey, a little cigar smoking hockey who uh, reckon everyone's going to do the heavy lifting. And he's never, I don't think he's ever done a decent day's work in his life. So you bring those two characters in, and, um, you know, uh, Mr. Um, Abbott uh, thinks that uh, he's a reincarnation of uh, Johnny Howard. Well, um, un unfortunately, there's a few kangaroos missing in the top paddock there, as far as I'm concerned. So he decides, him and, uh, uh, you know, I don't say this in a negative sense, but I, I just see hockey's just a fat cat, in my opinion. 
him and Fat Cat Hawking, I'll, I'll come out with it. Him and Fat Cat Hawking sitting down there, okay, what are we going to do? You know, the uh, budget's blowing right out, we'll blame Labor, as they always do, Liberal Labor, Liberal Labor, they're doing the same thing. So, what will we do? I know, let me think about it. Um, you know, oh, hang on, we'll hit the pensioners. We'll hit the pensioners, we'll hit the disabled, and we'll hit the medical co-payment. So my parents ring me after practically a lifetime of voting for the Liberal Party, when old Abbott and Fat Cat Hockey got in, that, I think it was 2013-14 budget, what an absolute, it was like hitting people in the head with a sledgehammer. And they're going to do budget repair. Budget repair, right? Eh? Okay. I said to my parents when they rang me up, my mother was just about crying on the phone. Now this is, I, I imagine, every single pensioner in Australia was the same. That's why Abbott got kicked out. That's why hockey, God knows where he is. Where is he, Siberia now? No one knows where, oh, he's in the USA. He may as well go to Siberia. But at the end of the day, you know, the arrogance of these two, thinking that every working Australian is going to cop that, well, people, they got people angry, and I think people are still angry and don't trust the Liberal Party after that. End of story. Now, the simple reason is when my, when my mother rang me and uh, said to me, Graham, why did they do this to us? Why did they do this to us? I said, Mum, it's a simple answer. Nothing complicated. I said, I phone $9 billion in tax. Right? Profit. Paid no tax. $9 billion. Last 10 years was recently reported at that time. And that's just one of the multinational corporations. So that leads me to my next point. Multinational corporations do not pay tax on profits. This is nothing new. But they've been extracting profits ever since Keating opened the door. And then Howard <coughs> and uh, Costello really opened and allowed them in like a flood. So what these multinational corporations did, they just put the vacuum cleaners into Australia, right? And you suck the profits out of uh, offshore, and that's how it works. Now, we're at the point now in time where it's all reached critical mass. And the current governments wonder what the hell's going on? Well, what the hell's going on is both sides of politics have progressively put Australia in a $800 billion deficit that's the government debt, but the total debt, in counting business debt and mortgage debt, is 5.7, 5.7 trillion. So uh, we're not in a very healthy state, even though it looks like everyone looks at this is driving the cars and stuff like that. However, this is the solution. One, the current political system is finished. It's stuck. They haven't been able to do anything. They've faltered. They've faltered. They've lied. They, they, there's no, no one trusts a politician now, especially after um, Fat Cat Hockey and, you know, Abbott the Rabbit. So especially when those two got in, it just, it, I, I, I've never seen such incompetence in all my life and distrust and lies. So <clears throat> I've been in business 30 years, mind you. If I ever did this to a client, what these politicians do, uh, that the client would come back in and want to kill me, literally, for, for dis, you know not uh, uh, fulfilling promises and betray betraying trust. So the trust in the political system in Australia is gone out. And I'm not even going to mention terrorism. That's another issue. I'll cover that in in a second, just slightly. So where are we at? So what I'm saying to you uh, on July two. Do not, under any circumstances, my opinion, is vote for any of the major parties at all. They've had their run. Vote the independents into the Senate. So we increase the Senate control of in, in, independent Senate control to about 